This is our ecology project by Allison Price and Stone Payne. Our first plant was a dogwood. The scientific name is Cornus, and for our information and importance, the dogwood and all of its relatives are most known for their very colorful flowering blooms. With the dogwoods being a flowering plant, they also produce pollen, which is needed to reproduce in plants. The wood from this species is used in many types of products, and many birds eat the seeds that this plant produces. Our second plant was a sugar maple, and its scientific name is Acer saccharum. Uh, for information and importance, the sugar maple is a deciduous tree that is very abundant throughout the southeastern United States. The stalk of the leaves on this plant are green and uphold the classic maple leaf shape. During this visit, it was observed that although spring was quickly approaching, the tree showed no signs of green color, making it much harder to pick out and identify versus picking it picking it out in the spring and the fall. Our third plant that we identified during our first visit was uh, an Easter lily and its scientific name is Lilium longiflorum. Uh, for information and importance, the Easter lily is a flowering plant that flowers from early spring to early summer. The plant gains the prefix Easter from its meaning in Christianity. During the time of our visit, the plant showed very little color and no flowering buds. Although it was not flowering, the leaves in the plant were still visible for identification. During our first visit, the fourth plant that we identified was um, lavender, and its scientific name is lavandula. For information and importance, uh, lavender is a shrub-like plant grown all across the world. Its primary use is for landscaping and extracting it for essential oils. During its blooming season, it takes a on a purple blue color. During this visit, the color of the stems were a light brown, which are green during the spring and summer. The flowering part of the plant had not yet bloomed during this visit, making the tips of the plant very weak and fragile. The fifth plant that we identified was a muscadine vine, and its scientific name is Vitis rotundifolia, or something like that. Uh, for information and importance, the following plant is a fruiting plant that produces a fruit called a muscadine during its fruiting season. The fruit is used throughout much of the country for wine making and many other things. During our visit, the vine showed no signs of fruiting and the vine had very little strength and no signs of getting green for spring. One thing that sets this grapevine species apart from others is the fact that it thrives in summertime heat unlike most. The sixth plant we identified in our first visit was the Millennium Sunrise Iris, and its scientific name was Iris limnerus. Um, for information and importance, this type of iris is a subgenus of beardless irises, which don't have hair on their dropping uh, sepals, also called their falls. This iris has a bright orange color that is very distinguished among normal purple colored iris. During this visit, the iris or the iris had grown to full maturity. The seventh plant we identified was a long stalk sedge. The scientific name is Carex pedunculata. For importance and significance, the long stalk sedge is a grass like ground cover. The ground cover is used to line walkways. Long stalk sedge seeds are disp dispersed by ants. During this visit, the sedge had begun to grow, but it had not reached its full potential. The eighth plant that we identified on our first visit was a pink lady apple tree, also called a Crips pink. The scientific name was Malus domesticata, or Crips pink again. For information and importance, we got that this plant and its relatives play a very important role in many ecosystems. This plant is a fruiting plant that produces apples, sold under the name Crips pink. The apples provide food for many animals and insects, also humans. During this visit, the plant had no signs of live forage on its limbs. There were no leaves, nor were there any signs of fruits on the tree. The ninth plant that we identified was the golden rod, which goes under the scientific name of Solidago. For information and importance, the young golden rod leaves are edible. This plant grows very large and has bright yellow flowers, which make it stand out among other foliage. During the time of our visit, the plant showed very little color and no flowering buds. Although it was not flowering, the root was still visible. The tenth plant that we identified was a moss, which goes under the scientific name of bryophyta. 
for information and importance, moss lack roots and grows off of other trees. This type of moss was a light green color. During the time of our visit, the moss was very small and seemed to be growing out more. At our second visit, the first uh, plant that we decided to uh, observe changes in was the dogwood, which goes under the scientific name of Cornus. For information and importance, the dogwood and all of its relatives are most known for their very colorful flowering blooms. With the dogwoods being a flowering plant, they also produce pollen, which is needed to reproduce in plants. The wood from this species is used in many types of products, and many birds eat the seeds that this plant produces. During this visit, the flowers had bloomed out, but they were very few. Some flowers had been blown off due to high winds and bad weather that we had recently had. The second plant that we decided to observe changes in on our second visit was the sugar maple, which goes under the scientific name of Acer saccharum. The sugar maple is a deciduous tree that is very abundant throughout the southeastern United States. The stalk of the leaves on this plant are green and uphold the classic maple leaf shape. During this visit, the leaves had finally grew out for spring and were a very healthy green color, which is much different than when, than when there were no leaves at all during the winter. The third plant we observed changes in on our second visit was the Easter lily. It goes by the scientific name of Lilium longiflorum. The information and importance is the Easter lily is a flowering plant that flowers from early spring to early summer. The plant gains the prefix Easter from its meaning in Christianity. During the time of our visit, the plant showed very little progress in growing. It had grown a little bit, but not to its full potential. The fourth plant we observed on our second visit was lavender. The scientific name it goes by is lavandula. The information and importance is that lavender is a shrub-like plant grown across the world. Its primary use is for landscaping and extracting it for essential oils. During its blooming season, it is taken upon a purple-blue color. During this visit, the plant had died off due to the cold weather during its blooming season. Weather, there was little left of the lavender other than just its root. The fifth plant we observed on our second visit was a muscadine vine. It goes by the scientific name of Vitis rotundifolia. Information and importance is the following plant is a fruiting plant that produces a fruit called a muscadine during its fruiting season. The fruit is used throughout much of the country for winemaking and many other things. During our visit, the fruit on the muscadine vine had yet to grow. The vines grew long and began to form little seeds. The sixth plant we observed on our second visit was the Millennium Sunrise Iris, which goes by the scientific name of Iris limtherius. Information and importance is this type of iris is one of a subgenus of beardless irises, which don't have hair on their drooping sepals, also called their falls. This iris has a bright orange color that is very distinguished among the purple colored irises. During this visit, the iris had grown to its full maturity. Here is our seventh plant on our second visit, which was the long stalked sedge. It goes by the scientific name of Carex penduculata which the importance and significance is the long stalk sedge is a grass-like ground cover. The ground cover is used to line walkways. Long stalk sedge seeds are dispersed by ants. During this visit, the sedge had grown, but not to its full potential. The eighth plant on our second visit is a pink lady apple tree. It goes by the scientific name of Malus domestica. The importance and significance is this plant and its relatives play a very important role in many ecosystems. This plant is a fruiting plant that produces apples sold under the name Crips Pink. The apples provide food for many animals and insects, but also humans. During this visit, the plant had shown no signs of fruit, but had begun to bloom. The foliage had begun to grow and looked very lush. Next, we have our ninth plant on our second visit, which was a goldenrod. The, the scientific name is Solidago, 
which the importance and information is young goldenrod leaves are edible. This plant goes, grows very large and has bright yellow flowers, which makes it stand out among other foliage. During the time of our visit, the plant had died due to the changing in temperatures. Half the plant was left living and looked a little lush but had very few leaves. Next, we have our 10th plant on our second visit, which was moss. It goes by the scientific name of Bryophyta. Information and importance is that moss lacks roots and grows off of other trees. This type of moss was a light green color. During the time of our visit, the moss had not grown at all. The moss was a darker green than before, yet seemed to still be growing up the tree. Next, we have our first animal, which was the carpenter bee. The scientific name is Xylocopa. The information and importance is that these bees are named carpenter bees because, in fact, they burrow into dead wood. During this visit, the weather was warm, so the bees were seen burrowing themselves into the dead wood on a porch. Our second animal was a robin. It goes by the scientific name of Turtus. Migratoris. Information and importance is the American robin is a migratory soundbird. This bird can be identified by its brightly colored red belly underneath its gray and black wings. During this visit, the bird was seen searching for worms. Our second animal was Fruticos lichen. It goes by the scientific name of lichen. Information and importance is this fungi is one type of lichen. These types of lichen normally have a symbiotic relationship between them and trees or the other plants they are growing on. During this visit, the lichen was lightly spread across a maple tree. Our fourth animal is a morning dove. The scientific name is Xenidae Zen marcura. The information and importance is that morning doves have a slender body and short reddish legs. These types of doves are also known as rain doves or morning doves. During this visit, the dove was seen flying around a dead tree. Our fifth animal was a ladybug. The scientific name is Coquilinidae. Information and importance is that ladybugs are brightly colored insects that are efficient in the prevention of pests. Ladybugs feed on aphids and white flies. They are used in greenhouses to prevent aphids from damaging products. During this visit, the ladybug was seen crawling on a piece of dead grass. Our sixth animal was a cardinal. The scientific name is Cardinal Day. Information and importance is though not seen well in this photo, the cardinal is a brightly colored bird. While the male cardinal is brightly colored, the female is very dull in color. As seen, this is a male cardinal. What we have learned through this ecology project is that some of our plants, though it was blooming season, ended up dying off due to the frigid weather and the frozen temperatures we've experienced this April.